Chris, congratulations. What do you make of this award? I'm really honoured at getting this award. I'm also uh, deeply touched. It's one of the nicest things that's happened to me in the last few years, to tell you the truth. And uh, what I'm really grateful for is the recognition that we're working really hard to make the sea and the maritime sector so important in the life of the country. Um, if we don't do that, we'll find ourselves marginalised and cut off from globalisation and unable to use the sea as we have done in the past. What we hope these awards do, as you have hinted is to carry a wider message you've touched on that but if you really had to pin down something that people really ought to get right into their minds what would it be the real message i think is that the sea is the physical equivalent to the world wide web uh, if we don't recognize that fact which is of course accentuated by the fact that most of the submarine cables that carry the internet go across the sea uh, then we are going to be cut off from globalization and all its benefits we won't have access to the prosperity or the trade or anything else that we do with other countries uh, and if we don't go out there in that space uh, we'll find other people seeking to dominate it to our disadvantage that's why we have to be out at sea, doing what we do best in this country, in every part of the maritime sector, competing, cooperating uh, where we can, but above all, actually living up to our heritage, which is, an, as an island nation, one that is strong and confident and successful at sea. Now, the matter's astonishingly pressing right now in the Far East and on China's. You could say China's sea, that's what they want us to think, but it ain't. But that's the issue, isn't it, particularly with a, with a resurgent and ambitious China? China represents a fundamental challenge to the international system that has prevailed for the last 400 years. Uh, and if we are to preserve the freedom of the seas, the navigational rights that we have had to sustain our trade and also our ability to move around the planet, we have to challenge right up front China's pretensions to creating uh, essentially what is a land grab in the South and East China Seas. They want to extend their territorial jurisdictions out to 1,500 miles from their coastline. It is way beyond the UN Convention of the Law of the Sea allows, which they ratified and signed up to, abandoning all their historic claims up to that point. And as long as we confront them early, as long as we bring them back into the international system, I think we'll be successful. If we leave it too late, we're going to have a crisis on our hands, one that may lead to conflict in the East and South China Seas. Now, the United States Navy at the moment and for the foreseeable future is at the forefront. You've been talking to them. What's the feedback been? The feedback from the Americans is that we recognize the need to maintain the freedom of the seas. We've been doing it actually for the last 40 years around the world. We're going to have to step it up with regard to China but we want other countries to come with us as well. This mustn't be seen as just a US v China issue. Everybody is interested in the freedom of the seas and the United States is saying come along help us demonstrate that freedom. Don't leave it just to the United States Navy. And I hope they've got a copy of your book on certain eminent <laughs> bedside tables. <laughs> I think they've read my book and I'm very glad to say it's being widely quoted the other side of the Atlantic. Thank you. Congratulations on your award. Thank, Thank you so much, much. Rob. Yeah. Thank you.